Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Shadowrun, and we are still going through missions. Okay, back to root. Geomantic Sabotage. Geomancy is big business in the Free Enterprise Zone. Here in Hong Kong, Feng Shui isn't just the act of rearranging your kitchen to make things look pretty. The fortunes of empires rise and fall with the ebb and flow of key, and sometimes that flow needs a helping hand. Wu Jing Incorporated are the preeminent practitioners of large-scale key manipulation here in the Free Enterprise Zone. They've gone to great, great lengths to channel key from all over Hong Kong into their headquarters. An enormous monstrosity they call the Wu Jing Sky Tower. There it is focused and transformed into good fortune through the building's geomantically attuned architecture and interior decoration. Our client believes that it is time for Wu Jing's good luck to run out. You are to infiltrate the Sky Tower and disrupt the flow of key throughout the building. You are to do so in two distinct fashions. First, you must disrupt the Feng Shui of the offices by subtly altering the environment of that level. This will cons consist of minor adjustments of desks, spilled water, and other small activities that are unlikely to be noticed. Where's the dangerous one? Ordinarily, even subtle disturbance of this nature would be noticed. That is, This is why the client wishes you to make a much louder demonstration on the rooftop garden. The garden is to be ransacked, utterly destroyed, set fire to things, uproot trees, that kind of thing. Our client has also specified that he would like you to destroy the large Buddha statue in the garden, smash the thing to bits, and leave them scattered across the rooftop. This level of destruction will keep Wu Jing's geomancers busy long enough that the more subtle disruptions below will take effect. In addition, it will send the kind of message our client would like Wu Jing to hear. I have utmost faith in your ability to cause destruction. The more disruption you can cause on both levels of the Sky Tower, the happier the client will be. As you are not a spellcaster yourself, it may be wise to bring Gobbit along. She will be able to see the most effective way to dis disrupt the key of the building. Take the run. Good. Contact me when you finish the job, and I'll send you your cut of the payment. Go back. Open the jobs directory. View all Pending jobs? Back to root. View all active jobs. Back to root. We're going to do the serial killer one first. BBS for relevant keywords. Misconnections. You, rappelling down the side of an unnamed luxury hotel in a ball gown on Monday night. Me, admiring the view from 28th floor urinals during a private soiree for an unnamed corporation that I was infiltrating. Our eyes met briefly before you had dropped out of sight. Your long dark hair had come loose from your signon, framing your beautiful flushed face. I will never forget it. You were carrying a duffel bag, bulging with stolen prototype weaponry. Well, I felt the intel that goes with it. Can we connect? Very funny, Blackjack. I'm sorry the job went sideways. I got trapped and had only one way out. We were supposed to have each other's backs. Just wait till you hear the way out that I had to take. We gotta lay low for now. And why are we posting about this on a public message board? <laughs> I love Shadowlands. So much. Oh, this is gonna be me. Been hearing some buzz about mainlander terrorists that showed up in Victoria Harbor and had a shootout with HKPF the other day. Anyone heard anything on that? Ming Pao said there were four of them that got away. One elf, two orcs, and a dwarf. A troll, an elf, and a human were killed. all killed on the scene. Word is there that there are members of the White Star out of Henan coming here to start trouble against the Executive Council. Looks like there's a 50,000 new yen reward for any information linked to their capture. The HKPF seems pretty nervous about letting these bastards walk freely around the streets. Heaven shot? You'd think they'd actually pay out to somebody like us? Not a chance. You walk in there to claim the reward, you're getting a throne in a hole with them. The HKPF doesn't keep promises to the sinless. Freedom Cowboy. Couldn't hurt to try, heaven shot. Why do you have to be such a downer? Because I know the police. They're all dirty, they're only in it to protect their paychecks, and they don't give a damn about any, anybody else. Believe me, I'm just looking out for your best interests. Like you and your triad looked out for my brother? You know he's still paying for his reconstructive surgery, you bastard? If a man wants to keep his teeth, he should pay what he owes rather than pull a gun on me. Simple as that. Okay, poetry slam. Ladies and gentlemen, poets and shadowrunners, welcome to the first annual Shadowland Poetry Slam. There are no rules. There are no, also no prizes, except bragging rights. 
And with no further ado, let the versification begin. How long do you think we can keep this going before the trolls show up or a sysadmin shuts us down? Why would they shut us down? It's a free board. We can be poetic if we want to. Just trust me, it happens. For some reason, these things always draw the worst sort of attention. Are you going to give us a poem or are you going to stand around complaining about why you can't? All right, I've got one. Wait for it. Synth muscles, smart links, neural booster, cyber limbs, all fall to grenades. A little musing on the transience of life in the shadows. Very nice, sir. When, oh, Tennyson, here we go. When the long shadows fall on Hong Kong, the neon lights pierce the coming night. Tread with me. Okay, timer is going. Tread with me the velvet blackness. Let no lamp shine on our deeds. And let me say that again since I interrupted it so rudely. When the long shadows fall on Hong Kong, the neon lights pierce the coming night. Tread with me the velvet blackness. Let no lamp shine on our deeds. That's That one's entitled Our Hour. That might have just been the most pompous thing I've ever read. Try this one on, on for size. Lasers are red, shadows are black. With mad on the street, you'd best watch your back. Now you're mad. My poem wasn't pompous, you uncultivated rube. It was a homage to Wang Wei, the famous Tang Dynasty master, the Juju form of poetry. It's traditional, unlike the ridiculous limerick you just posted. Now, now, I don't think you have to take the word slam quite so literally. Hey, you people know the rules. Poetry slams have been out of bounds on this BBS since the Laughing Man debacle of 55. If you want to sling your fancy words, do it on a different forum. I'm shutting this thread down. Told you. <laughs> I've got a courier job next week that's supposed... How did that show up on a keyword search? I don't know, but it's amazing. I've got a courier job next week that's supposed to take me into the walled city. I'm from Kuala Lumpur. I've never been to Hong Kong, but I hear that place is dangerous as hell. Is there anything I should know? Oh, you've got nothing to worry about. It's just low-cost housing development full of hard-working people. Here, take a look at this news report. This is going to be us. Short trid clip begins playing. This is Sunny Chung with Horizon News. On today's sunny side up, the Kowloon Walled City. A blight on the free enterprise zone or low-cost housing for the economically disadvantaged. We'll introduce you to some of the hard-working residents and how they live, how they contribute to the growth and prosperity of our city. A montage sequence begins showcasing the destitute poor of the walled city going about their daily lives. The shots have been carefully chosen, showing only the smiling, productive residents. A stark contrast to your own experience inside it. Many residents of Hong Kong regard the walled city as a place of no return. To outsiders, it is the last stop on a long road to homelessness. Rumors abound of feral ghouls, unsafe living conditions, and triad extortion. Yet when we went there, the reality was far different. What we saw will shock you, citizens of Hong Kong, working and living just like the rest of us. Their apartments are smaller and their shops more modest, but the people who live here wouldn't be out of place anywhere in the Fez. Citizens like shoemaker Chow Sang Sui. The scene cuts to an elderly man in a closet-sized stall filled with shoemaking equipment. He smiles broadly at the camera. Oh, I love it here. We have a community, you know? We're like family. Maybe we don't have as nice of you as they do in the Repulse Bay, but I can't imagine living anywhere else. It's not a paradise, no, but it's my home. I grew up here. How could I possibly leave? Oh, we met that guy. The camera shifts back to Sunny Chung, who now stands in front of one of the entrances to the walled city. Did you even go in? Contrary to popular opinion, the walled city serves a vital function. The poor and downtrodden find a home in the walled city and a, a community where they have a voice. Can work and even prosper far from being the eyesore that this video suddenly stutters, freezes, and ends. Okay, I've decided to... Uh, okay, I've decided to cut the rest of that crap. She keeps going on about what a good place the walled city is and how we all need it. Don't buy any of it. It may not be hell, but you can see it from there. Freedom Cowboys just trying to get you in trouble. So how do you know the real story? Because I grew up there. You know what it's really like? It's eating old broth made from rat bones because there's nothing else. It's watching your neighbors sell their five-year-old son to organ legos so they don't have to starve to death. When you die in the walled city, your neighbors cheer because they'll get the clothes off your back. I wouldn't wish the walled city on my worst enemy. No more posts on this thread. Okay, Isabel. I don't have any post 
post pay data to posts. So that's a no. Okay, walk away. And I walk away. Maybe I should have named her Vex. Uh, let's see. Let's go down. Hello, Ractor. It's oppressively hot down here, and the air is full of synthetic odors that grab you by the sinuses and refuse to let go. You can smell engine grease and melting plastic, ionized air, and lead solder. A quick scan of the room tells you why. The downstairs tin has converted this space into a machine shop. Metal fabrication tools and duroplast extruders line the walls. A pair of heavily, heavy industrial manipulators hung, hang from the ceiling. The man in black trench coat stands with his back to you, staring at a monitor mounted above a sturdy workbench. Shouldn't you be over here, then? He addresses you without turning. Ah, I was wondering when I'd meet the new neighbor. His voice is pleasant, cultured. There's a hint of a Russian accent there. I should have read that first. But it's buried under layers of nuance. Please, stay where you are. I'll be with you in... That's not Russian. I'll be with you in just a moment. And unless you fancy an unplanned trip to Chrome Alley, don't touch anything. There are all manner of tools in here that could take your hand. Thanks for the warning. Don't mention it. I have no interest in seeing anyone hurt to my shop, especially not my upstairs neighbor. Examine the robot. Try to see what's on the screen. Feed on the monitor looks like some sort of design software. You can see what appears to be a slim, spidery appendage in orthographic perspective views. Very good, yes. That's coming along nicely. Very nicely indeed. He turns toward you, smiling, and for the first time you can see his face. He has broadly handsome Slavic features and a chiseled jaw. His eyes are like flecks of ice. Sorry to keep you waiting, miss. I could do this. That would be interesting. Noel. It's no problem. Don't worry about it. You're too kind. Now tell me, what can I do for you? His voice trails off as a flash of motion catches his eye. With alarming speed, a sinister-looking drone scuttles out from under the work table. Its movements are surprisingly agile and fluid. The machine rears back menacing, spreading its forelegs in a clear, clearer sign of aggression. The man's smile tilts, and his tone goes apologetic. Please don't mind the droid. He can be territorial. But so long as you remain civil, he will not bite. He extends a hand. Simultaneously, the drone relaxes into a neutral position, lowering its killing legs. Ractor. My mechanical counterpart here is Koshe. Pleasure. His hand is rough and normally warm to the touch. He shakes your hand with solid grip. I am very pleased to meet you, my friend. In a community such as Heioi, it's important to be on good terms with one's neighbors. Hmm. Agreed. Speed which I'd like to ask you some questions if you have the time. He glances at the bracer on his forearm, a technical display winks to life and gutters out very well. This morning's casting should still be cooling for another few minutes. That's time enough to talk. Koshe is an interesting name for a droid. Yes, I suppose there's that it is. Not many riggers would name their most prized possession after a villain from a fairy tale. Nod to my heritage, I suppose. Yes, I know the story you're talking about. He smile widens. Oh, how marvelous. I hadn't thought to meet anyone versed in the Russian classics here in Hayoi. I've studied, if memory serves. Koshe the Deathless was an immortal villain and a kidnapper of women. Indeed, he was those things, but it was not Koshe's mysteries that drew me to the name. I suppose it was that notion of immortality through cleverness that resonated with me. There was something to be learned from that, I was sure, and so when it came time to name my beloved creation, it was, his was the first name that came to mind. And is your drone deathless like its namesake? In a manner of speaking, I suppose that he is. I have redundant copies of every piece of his architecture, and his core programming is stored on a disk in a secret location. Should he ever suffer critical damage, I can easily bring him back. I had a plan once to automate the self-repair process. I must confess it was really quite ingenious. But alas, my research was lost. One day I will reclaim it, and Koshe will become as deathless as the stories claim. But it will not be today. When you say this morning case casting, what did you mean? Exactly what I said. The casting that I made of a new locomotive assembly for Koshe. 
He gestures at the display above the work table. A biomimetic design, as you can see. This one is inspired by the walking legs of a decapod crustacean, the mangrove crab to be specific. Will this new leg assembly make your drone more effective? That remains to be seen, but there is more to life than combat effectiveness, is there not? By fabricating new components for Koshi, I unlock options, different ways of being. Even the failures, and there have been many, have value in this context. Hmm. How did you learn to do all of this? More training experience than I care to mention, he offers you a dry or I smile. Drone architecture was once my profession, you see, but now it's more of a calling. One that I'm free to pursue, now that I've freed myself from the shackles of corporate servitude. I imagine you're thinking of uploading your memory into that thing. Hmm. Here we go. Are you Russian? I thought I could... Okay, you've got some interesting machinery in here. Not the kind you typically see outside of corporate settings. The same could be said of, said of many in Heioi, I'm sure. This is a smuggler's den, is it not? Our entire economy is based on people having things they shouldn't. Is there a particular device that interests you, or out of curiosity? The robotic arms you've got over there, they look like something taken from an automotive assembly plant. His smile flashes brilliantly in the light. Good guess, that's precisely what they are. They fell off a boat, you might say. They weren't cheap, but I acquired them and had them mounted to the walls of my shop. I simply had to have them. The return on investment has been dramatic, yes, they are cruder by far than the wall devices that I used in my professional life, but they still do the job and they are mine. He gazes lovingly at the industrial arm still smiling. They have increased my fabrication capabilities nearly tenfold, and that to me is worth any price. Keeping all this machinery running can't be cheap, how can you afford it? Freelance, at the risk of sounding immodest, I've Mod I've commodified myself rather well. There are always corporations in need of de design co consultations. You'd be surprised by how lucrative such work can be. And there's always other work that I can turn to in a pinch. Are you Russian? I thought I caught a hint of the accent there. He nods. You have good year. I'm impressed. Yes, I grew up in the Zoni no Nov Novgorod. Went to school there. Started my career there in the industrial sector. I'm doing the wrong accent. A fairly common story, I'm sure, but I have also traveled a great deal, and in so doing, I have absorbed a number of other languages and dialects, which have perfectly explained why the player behind the microphone cannot do my voice at all. How many languages do you speak? Counting Russian and Cantonese, 15. He smiles, shrugs apologetically. That's right, we're speaking Cantonese this entire time. It shames me to admit that I'm only literate in twelve. However, <laughs> I would I wanted to have that. I want to have that be. I want to have to admit to that shame. That's still impressive. Perhaps, but when compared to the com when compared to the common man. But I've known a great many polyglots who can and do put me to shame. Oh, that's interesting. He gives you another half shrug and Koshay mirrors the gesture. Arabic has been a particular bugbear of mine. The unfamiliar characters, the lack of vowels, make it damn tricky to get a handle on. But I suppose that all men have their limits. When you said that you used to work for a corps, whose payroll were you on? He sighs. That is something of sore subject. My departure was involuntary, you see. I did not part ways with my employer under the best of terms. I will tell you that I worked for Grecian Avia Corps, but you'll forgive me if I don't want to go into the details. You said you did other work besides consulting. Care to tell me what kind? I'm hoping this might unlock a rigor. He pauses, and for a second something flashes in his eye. Koshe lowers his body into a crouch. Rather a personal question, wouldn't you say? Maybe, but then we're having a personal conversation. Indeed we are. But even in personal conversation, certain topics can be held off limits. Truth be told, I don't feel especially comfortable discussing my side work with relative strangers. Suffice to say that my freelance activities often fall on the illicit end of the spectrum. Hmm. Oh, it's okay. I'll drop the subject. Maybe we can come back to it later. I'm surprised there's not an etiquette thing. Actually, what's... You're a shadow runner, aren't you? I dislike the term, but yes, I run the shadow. What gave me away? 
Design consultants live in apartments in Victoria Harbor. You're living in a rusted out boat in Hayoi. There's got to be a reason for that. I'm surprised there's no etiquette option for that. You are correct, of course. The residents of shallow communities are usually either too poor to live elsewhere or engage in behaviors too Ill illicit to risk it. I'll admit to being a ladder camp. Designing robotics is my passion, but it doesn't always pay the bills. He runs a hand over Crochet's armored chassis, caressing the sculpted metal with his fingertips. My status as a foreigner has proven something of an impediment in this regard. And so, sorry as I may be to say it, the lion's share of my income flows from Crochet's aptitude for butchery. Such is life, I suppose. We do what we must to do what we love. It seems like everybody on this boat runs the shadows. Why not pool our resources and work together? Compelling offer. I'm quite doing well. Doing quite well on my own. But I must admit there are certain jobs for which I am unsuited. Magic eludes me, and I am not a decker. My strength comes from material objects in the world, real world, solid things with mass and heft, things that I can build and operate. Sadly, a great many of clients are only interested in term teams that display a mastery over the intangible. This group of yours, do you have people who can cover those bases? If so, then maybe we can help each other out. Yes, we have a shaman and a decker, both competent at their jobs. In that case, I'll accept your offer on a provisional basis. We'll do a few runs together and see how we get on. If our association bears fruit, it will continue. If not, I will bid you farewell. My farewell. I'll go back to working alone. How's that sound? Welcome aboard. Very good. Excellent. When you receive a job, you know where to find me. My skills and resources are at your disposal. And with that, I'm afraid that I must bid you good day. I still have work to do down here. This leg assembly will not clean itself. I'll be in touch. Look forward to working with you. And with you. And I with you. That was useful. Oh. He's on our team now. Mangler. Predator. Gains 5% accuracy boost. Ooh. Movement or accuracy. I am going to go for the movement. Oh, the art is so pretty. There is nothing here. That's where he sleeps or stores stuff or something. Is there anything back here? He's currently in the process of cleaning his weapons with meticulous care. Wu's cabin appears to be the only clean spot on the bolt hole. His equipment is neatly laid out on his bedding, grouped by type, arranged just so. See you in the next video.